Hi everybody, just wanted to do another quick little video for you, post-surgery video, can't do much outside so might as well talk just a little bit. Wanted to give you an update on something. The update is on the Smith & Wesson M&P 10mm 4 inch that I was using in some of the videos. We saw some malfunctions with and then we saw it get whooped by the XDM, Springfield XDM Elite 10mm. So uh, here's what happened. The other one, the M&P, it's gone. This one is the winner. This one gets to stay. The M&P leaves. I'll revisit it. They'll work on it. I'm sure Smith & Wesson, they're going to get plenty of reports back. Uh, they already have. They're, they're going to work it out, hopefully. They're a, they're a big enough company. I'm sure they could try to get something figured out for it. In the meantime, the Springfield, I'm working one-handed here. Sorry, so it's a little awkward. But um, this pistol right here, this is it. This is... This is one of the, the nicest 10 millimeter firearms that I've used. As far as standard, out of the box, 10 millimeter polymer guns that I've used, this one is the winner. I have used the Glock 20. I'm not gonna beat up on Glock. I just didn't have success with it. And I'm a hand loader, so I didn't feel comfortable with the barrel that came from the factory. I didn't wanna change a bunch of things out. I didn't wanna change sights out. I didn't like the plastic sights. I'm pretty rough on my firearms. I didn't wanna go through trigger things. I just left it alone. I'm not knocking it. I'd like to revisit actually and go back to the 29 or the 40 and try one of those out. I think actually probably the next one that I would like to do is get the 40 or the 29 actually so I can compare it here to this XDM. I'd like to try to run it through a little bit of an ammo test but I think I'd have to put an aftermarket barrel in it. I don't think I could trust the unsupported barrel. But in the meantime, here's why this beats it. If you go look back at some of our old videos, I'll try to link some in the description. Um, this gun ran every kind of ammo that we put through it, period. The MMP choked on a few things. The MMP didn't do well in a Olympus test with low pressure ammo, and then it didn't do well in other tests with just defensive ammo in general. We did get it to run the Hornady Critical Duty. It liked that, um, but that's all it liked as far as defensive ammo, except for Underwood Extreme Defender 100 grain. It did eat those. I'll give it that. But it was just a problematic firearm, and I'm not willing to deal with that with a 10 millimeter. And, you know, a lot of people are going to use that for woods defense, or they're going to do it for bear defense, hunting. Uh, it's, you know, also two-legged predator defense. But the thing is, you have to be able to trust it. 10 millimeters got to be reliable. There's too much of a large spectrum of ammo to have to run through. Uh, to just, you know, be able to run target loads, but not the hot stuff that you, you're going to find off the shelf. You never know what you're going to get, especially in today's ammo condition. Is my relationship with Smith & Wesson over? Absolutely not. I have a couple really nice, you know, some automatics, and I have a lot of revolvers that I like of theirs. You'll get to see some of the bigger boys here pretty soon. Uh, but Smith & Wesson's a great company in the past. I don't know what's going on with them right now. They'll get this sorted out, I'm sure. They got a big enough company. They'll either make this right or they won't. I mean, time's going to tell. Uh, it's not going to take that long, I don't think. But I'll revisit that firearm again. I'd like to get the 4.6 inch. That could be a totally different story with that firearm. But I'm going to give it some time to rest. There's a couple other firearms I'd like to play with before I get back to that one. Like I said, I definitely want to take a look at the Glock 29. I just don't know what to do about the barrel. Uh, supposedly, you know, can't run my kind of ammo through that. So we'll see what we have to do. So what did this gun run? Well, this gun can run 180 grain and 155 grain Hornady Customs. This firearm can handle Underwood, same thing, 155 grain, 180 grain XDPs. This firearm can handle Underwood Hardcast, 220 grain. That's traveling at 1,250 feet per second. This firearm can handle the 140 grain extreme penetrators. That's going at 1500 feet per second. It also runs the Hornady Critical Duty. It also runs the SMB range ammo that a lot of people were actually having problems with from what we've seen and heard back reports of on the MMP 10 millimeter. It runs the green manufactured. This is new manufactured actually, Freedom Munitions. But it runs my remanufactured hand loads just fine in all different velocities from 950 to 1200 or more. It also runs this hand load that I know is 1250, uh, 
1,250 feet per second, pushing a 155 grain XPP bullet. It ran it all. Uh, I'm very confident in this firearm running any ammunition that I put through it. On top of that, the modularity. So here's the configuration it's in right now, and that's with that's how it comes out of the factory. It's going to have this magwell on it. Now I don't have the connector in there because I'm going to show you something here real quick. If you don't like that magwell, you can take it right off, but it comes right off. It's made to do that. Put your magazine in. There you go. You don't have that magwell anymore. Now, if you want to make your magazine even slimmer, it's made to take that base plate off and they send you base plates. It's made like that right out of the factory. It's modular. It's supposed to be like that. If you want to, if you want to make this a full size firearm, you can order a 15 round magazine with the corresponding back strap. So this is a number two. Look, now this became a full size firearm. For all intents and purposes, this just became a full size firearm. Hello, Smith and Wesson. Do you see what they did here? All right, so we still have a little bit of daylight. I wanted to show you guys a little bit more shooting with the Springfield XDM Elite 10 millimeter. I'm truly handicapped at the moment right now. My right arm's in a sling. I have to use my left arm, so let's see how I do. But it'll also show us how someone who's compromised would have to use this firearm if they had to start carrying on their offside. So I have 11 plus one in the magazine, or in the firearm right now. And I have sailor and below. I tried to go at a realistic pace for you. That's not bad. Those are hell actually within the center mark. So I got to switch out my magazines here real quick for you. So now we have the 15 round magazine in here. This just turned this into a full size pistol. Let's see how I do here. Ambidextrous slide dropping ability. It cycled them all. Let's go take a look at our target. So going a little bit quicker with the 11 round, 11 plus one. We got them all in the center where we needed them. Got a couple good right in the chest. Then we moved up to the 15 round magazine. We took our time a little bit just to see how our accuracy could be with the offhand. And I'd say that's pretty good. Clipped them one time on the top. So I'm happy with this firearm. Uh, I don't see why, why I would choose anything different. Uh, right now what's on the market this is it so full size 15 round capacity we can go to 11 round capacity or we could take that base plate off and get the even lower profile and have 10 round capacity that's fantastic you can get these 15 rounders with the corresponding back straps in one two or three i mean it's, it, you can't beat that so we're going to put this firearm through some ammo tests we're going to do some gel tests with it Maybe we'll do a little torture test on it. I don't know. Maybe we'll see if we can choke it up. But so far right now, this thing is winner, winner, chicken dinner. I don't, I would, I'm very surprised. I never thought that this firearm would be one that I personally would want. I'd seen the XDMs before. And for some reason, you know, the market is just saturated with nine millimeter compact pistols. And it, it just didn't do anything for me at the moment. But when I finally got this thing in the mail, well, not the mail, but the FFL, um, Wow, super impressed, and I can't believe it's reliability. 
Springfield, you guys just, like I said before, you guys knocked it out of the park. Good job. This one's staying in the collection. Well, there you have it, guys. Small little range test there on the 15 round magazine. Sorry, I can't do much more. I can barely load a magazine right now, let alone shoot a whole bunch. Um, but we'll get after it some more. But ergonomics are great. You saw the ambidextrous slide release. I use the ambidextrous magazine uh, release. I never thought that I would use ambidextrous controls. Here I find myself using them today. Springfield, knocking it out of the park. I can't say it enough. And as always, if you like this kind of content, please like, share, and subscribe. Helps push us around YouTube, gets the algorithm going, gets our kind of content promoted around so we get to see it even more. Shows up in your feed. Thanks, guys. See you next time.